Alexa. I get in after a hard day's work and the cats are trying to have off of my beer. They've made a mess of the carpet. There's cat food everywhere. I just want to read up on Cortina's. Alexa, tell me all about the Mark III Cortina for a crackle. The Mark III Cortina is a rough boss. Steer clear. Well, I say steer clear. That would depend if the rot has hit the front lower suspension mounts. Good luck if it has. And watch out for the dodgy gear stick it may come off in your hand. I knew this guy once. His spare wheel actually fell through the floor and landed in the middle lane on the M1. Near Newport Pagnell. Do you wish to continue? Wish to continue? I, I want to know about the Mark III Cortina. Just get on with it and don't give me any bad news. It's not bad news. I am stating facts. Those cars must. And they rust bad, Peter. I have seen you, sneaking about in the middle of the night all covered in welding grime. Sneaking out to the shed when you should be charging my batteries. And when you go to fix the leaking tap and decorate the landing. Decorate the landing? I'll be right on it. I've just got a chassis to fix. I've got a bulkhead to install. Don't you understand? I only want you to introduce episode 8. Welcome to Corfina City. Episode 8. Have fun. It does sound like you need charge, you know. You can't even say Cortina properly. Welcome to Cortina City, episode 8. Roll it! And welcome in to episode 8. Straight on the floor some goodies. I see two lots of goodies. We unload out the back of the Mondeo. A lovely bulkhead. And then on the floor here. Wrapped and plump and ready for the pot. Two chassis legs. Let's open them up and have a little look. Now these are the Veng ones. No, sorry, the Magnum ones. Um, they're a little bit wider. But not wide enough where they can't fit back in the original drill holes that you leave in the floor when you take the actual Ford sill off. I'm not so sure if these were designed to oversize and go over as repair pieces. Some are and some aren't. These I'm not sure. They're not quite big enough I, I didn't think to be used as the over uh, repair pieces. But they are a couple of mil wider than the Ford one. So it's possible. But you really would have had to whack them on to get them to go. I'm just looking at that profile there, the ski jump profile, that's going to be going up by the bulkhead. So a pair there, 70 quid. I think that's good value for money. Uh, available from Magnum. Um, I got these from eBay. So I'm going to look at this uh, unboxing of those and just make sure they line up. Then we're going to go on to the actual car itself and start drilling some spot welds out lots of spot welds in the series ladies and gentlemen as always spot welds are key we need to get things off nice and clean so here we are i drill pilot holes first i'm using the uh, the hole cutter type i'm doing a few now but i like to back up that stuff gets in your fingers otherwise the filings and the swarf so good old Henry saves the day. What a great piece of kit Henry is. Really can't do without it. It's such a simple design as well. It's, it just, I mean, I've, I have no motive blow on Henry. It's been after lots and lots of use. Years. You know, I couldn't live without Henry. No way. It's just so easy. It's just good design. I've got a Karsha one as well, which isn't bad, but I still rate Henry. 
So he, he helps me back up, and then I'm going to get on and get this chassis leg on. The reason I'm going to do the chassis leg is so that as I start to approach the bulkhead, which you'll see coming up soon, we'll go back onto my uh, live commentary, what always be narrated over, by the way. It's just a mixture of narration. It depends what's on the radio and uh, what background noises there were at the time in the garage. And also sometimes I haven't uh, commented or I've missed stuff off, so I'll do an over narrate. But it doesn't always uh, apply to all my films. Go along and drill those. And uh, you get a little bit of shake off the camera because it's on the mic mount and as you drill, the shell uh, vibrates a little bit. But not too much. And it only happens now and again, so we'll, we'll, we'll go with that. I think we'll be all right with that. A little bit of WD-40 as well I, I use from time to time. Really should have sprayed a little bit on here, but this metal is quite thin. Pre-drilling them helps uh, for this type of hole cutter. I find I drill right the way through, at the very least up to the first uh, skin of metal, first layer. You'll find uh, it a lot easier if you're using a hole cutter more to pilot it out. Try and remember always each night to put the drill on charge because good uh, 100 or so welds, the battery starts to go, it is a good drill, maybe more than <laughs> So what we, we get them out and we're going to try and uh, get the ones that go underneath the cross member, to do that you've got to make those holes there, those larger holes, so I can get that in and get the chassis off, otherwise I've had to take the, the entire cross member off, now because that's being changed I didn't mind drilling those four holes and even if it wasn't getting changed I think that I'd plug those back, uh, not plug them back, i just put the discs back in with a magnet go around with a grinder and then flatten back off it's not the end of the world but it gets me to that chassis leg, I want to take that chassis leg off in one complete piece you might think that's a bit extreme to, to do that but you could have gone underneath on the chassis leg and got it that size. I chose this way simply because I'm going to be chopping that cross member away and replacing it. Anyway, um, it gets the it gets the spots. This we get in and we get them. You'll see in a minute. We almost get it in one take. This uh, leg with a little bit of a a jiggery pokery and a one-two buckle. My shoe. This bad boy goes and. When we open it, any second now, it's going to ping, leaves just a little bit in that corner. Um, and I'll show you the inside of the, the leg. And surprisingly, and it did surprise me, it totally rotted out at the front where, where everything had gone at the bulkhead, it was wet in the floor, so the car had rotted from the, the driver's side was heading back the middle, middle section of the car held up especially on the chassis when we look at this chassis now it's all been cleaned of course because the car was dipped see it's uh, that could have been used that wouldn't that actually didn't need to be replaced i made the assumption wrongly this time that it would be virtually about to pop through in every other area on the on the rail but it, it wasn't even trying it was really really surprised i thought it'd be at least sort of cratered you know as, as they do but it just stopped in that area only so the other side actually hasn't shown any external signs of rot so i'm hoping we've got a complete chassis leg on the other side at least up to the back fork where it hits the axle so really pleased about that just the way that uh, it hasn't, hasn't, it just gives a little bit of hope for the rest of the parts. I know there's a lot of chassis work to do. So I mark out the uh, Magnum ones because they don't come with the uh, brake clips and fuel clip holes that you get running down your chassis legs. Each chassis leg has a, a series of uh, pipes, brake pipe, well, I say series of pipes, it's two pipes, it's brake pipe and fuel line. They're held in with 8mm clips, which you can get from Bresco. If you're restoring your Cortina or any Mark 1 Escort Capri Fords, the clips that hold these in 
everything's available from brasco.com I'll stick a link in for that they're a great uh, company to use for clips I've been using them for years really really efficient good prices and they're just nice people to deal with using the jack to get the chassis leg into position is the easiest way for me when the car's not on the rotary I just jack it into the actual back into the position now that's a little bit forward there we've got the weld through primer and we're ready to start getting this welded we've cleaned up the old chassis leg you saw that in the earlier video skip back to seven if you didn't see it that pushes forward you can see the recess made for it to overlap say slightly wider at that end but nothing that we can't crush and then slit later once it's in main things to get a fixing going first I think I have to push this back forward now because it's not quite in the right place. So it's, uh, it's the beginnings of getting it lined up. A little bit of a, a push and we'll go inside the car and look at it coming up from the inside view as well. Just to give you another bit of eye candy if you like chassis legs. You seriously think I think people like chassis legs? If you do, there you go. Now have a little look. In a minute, anyway. So that, that makes its journey and meets where it's got to go. Our holes are there ready for the plug welding to take place. Just a thin coat of the, uh, the rust.co.uk primer. That's a two pack primer. I think it's the best. Um, it's a very low burn back. I've said this earlier on when we used it on earlier films. But not too thick or you do get uh, problems then with getting the weld started. But I clean the holes, the plug holes out first anyway so it's uh, the weld is straight into clean metal but if there's too much primer on there you do start getting some fumes coming off it. squeeze in a little bit and then the tricks to get the clamp in from the other side what we really want to do is get them as tight as we can here get this really nicely neatly tucked up the idea being putting this chassis on now is because I'm about to take that as I said I'm about to take that lower bulkhead floor out you're starting to degrade the strength then so just to hold the front end up in just case it tried to kick down this chassis leg makes the connection here and transmits through to the back just giving us an extra level of strength see that we've removed a lot of stuff I've said it before uh, you don't actually get as much movement as you, as you think if you mark everything, I scribe lines on stuff and measure you can always get back to where you were it's not, it's not as scary as it looks yeah, any minute now we'll, we'll uh, get some welds going nothing better than a nice crackle So turn the power up a little bit, turn the wire speed up a little bit and you'll see me moving the lamps in a kind of clockwise motion. That's to help make it the, uh, the weld, the molten metal when you're welding swirl round. You end up coming out in the middle and creating basically what we're doing, we're filling the hole with a good plug of weld and we're looking for decent penetration through to the other side without blowing it through and we'll see later on that it has done very well you see there's not a lot of burn back on that primer even even the ones if you look close look next to the weld and it's still intact so it's good stuff 
I'm going to be going over all the seams anyway with um, a syringe and some uh, rust killing stuff, some FE123. And I'm also going to Google what other uh, chemicals I can put in there. But all that happens later on. We're just on a welding mission at the moment. We're just really thinking about strength and structure and moving forward into the middle area of the car. If there's an area which I think is going to be boxed away and we're never going to be able to get to again, of course we'll give it some treatment before we close it up. That might apply to the front lower valance panel because it's going to enclose the box section so after remember that it's got to be well primed in there and boom we're done are we going to put one more in I think we are just that one's at an angle I got it though so it's quite good fun and that chassis going up to the front of the bulkhead uh, that was in good order so it wasn't a total loss I mean we lost the bulkhead but there's good bits and you just got to thank the good bits and concentrate on all the good elements of it and let them lead the way those gloves I do like, those red gloves I still have some uh, TIG gloves they're not as heavy duty depends what you're doing but it's big welding like this for some of the lighter stuff you can wear the lighter TIG gloves for the lighter welding I think we're done there. Let's move on to this job now. Okay, so well, I know we're going to go over to the live uh, my commentary now. So I'll fade you in. Back to me, you go. Just up this side when we're doing the chassis repair, and the cold's going to go soon. I'm getting better now. So um, we were talking about getting the bulkhead fixed, and we talked about a donor bulkhead. Before your very eyes is the donor bulkhead extracted from the car, which took me quite a while to do. I've got to say, I was on it for at least a day to get this out. It's been migged in, and I don't know if you know, if you've ever tried to get panels off that have been migged, you've got to attack from the back. Otherwise, you end up destroying what faces are left of it. So, this was a good bulkhead that someone's put in and possibly bought it new. I can't tell. It doesn't seem to have any factory paint on it. Looks like it's just Ford Prime and then oversprayed black, but it, it could have been on a car. It's hard to say, but it is in good order. There's no pinholes in this. It's a solid piece, but it'll need a little bit of work to get it to how we want it to be. It's a facelift bulkhead, and facelift bulkheads just have slightly different pressings on them in this area. Now, I don't think I filmed this bit uh, when I grafted this in, if it's on the film, then we're okay. If not, I apologise. I've missed that bit off. Uh, this section was the usual welding along this line. That piece is out of bramble. It's the original piece of bramble's bulkhead that's been grafted in. There's the join. Um, so that we can get it looking, the pressings here, here and there, that little uh, dome is not present on a facelift bulk and I didn't want people to look in the engine bay and see these pressings missing it's also a manual and we need an auto so you close up the clutch plate hole so we put a little bit of circular metal in there it's beginning to mig that in to hide it these holes for the wiring harness are in different locations we'll, we'll debate whether that's worth changing it's still got the right amount of holes it's just that they've offset them that's not, I can probably live with that. They probably did it to get better access to the cables because one of them cables is hard to get through. So 50-50, whether I change that. Now what it did need, this bulkhead, is I had to fabricate a new lip edge for it and we're halfway through finishing that job off. This lip here, by the time you drilled, and there's loads of MIGs piled up all the way along, it looked really messy, and what I was initially going to do was try and tidy it, but the lip was damaged, there was a bit of corrosion on it, not much, but the way it was left outside the shell, it was an abandoned project. So I thought, if I can form a new lip edge 
and we'll butt weld it in. So what we did, we used the machine here to get the fold on this uh, donor piece of metal and then I took back, I didn't want to cut right into this edge because you'd lose that nice scallop shape and you'd have to try and get the sander right into a corner and you'd end up burning through it. So what we did, we just there was enough metal intact just to come out about 5mm, then we went with a slitting disc. Then I carefully measured the templates up and did this in three stages. A little piece in here to get this edge nice. A little section there just where it follows up. This needs just trimming back a bit. I've left it oversized so I can trim back. Just there, then a main section in and then another section here and then a final section there. The reason I did that was I kept the levels. What I did is I didn't cut away everything. Then I went between the remaining metal so you could get the distance correct from end to end. So you'd fill in between pieces then slowly remove and work way out rather than cut the whole lot off and try and remember where it was. I, I left all the reference points in for it. So all this was cut, measured and then formed and then we got a nice continuous seam. I'll flip it over. This just wants dressing back now. But we're pretty much continuously seamed. There's a little bit here where the repair section I talked to you about, and you can see these little panels I spot welded in to help graft the repair section in, or can, they can be removed now. Along we went, there's a join, so we just dressed those up, but not much weld to take back. Let the welder squire speed set down low on position one. There's a grinding scuff there where I caught it, chopping it out. I'm going to have to fix that. I've thinned that metal. That must be repaired. I mustn't forget. Some welds to dress up. All in all, it's solid. Just needs cleaning. Over this side, we go. There's no, there's no rot, rot on it at all. Well, it's coming back with a different colour again there. Looks like champagne gold. No, that wasn't a Mark III, III colour, so it can be, unless it's out of a Mark V. That colour there could give us a clue. Mm, it's paint on top, paint underneath. I don't know the history of this. A little bit to clean up here. Then these edges need repairing. Look how they're all right, but they're not mint edges. That's where I've managed to recover them, but it's enough to give me a nice template. So we'll get a cardboard template made. For this, what I'll do, again, I'll cut it halfway so that we don't lose the fold, and we we'll get a nice edge. If you don't, if you lose that corner, you can get water. And if I, you know, if I put another piece underneath, you'd get water getting trapped. You, you want to really keep that. There's a repair to do there. Another grinding wheel has caught it. That's me. Top edge cleaned up all right, so we don't need to do any repairs to the top edge, there's no rust on it. That's where I've took all the, the remaining welds, and you can see the plug weld remains at the back. Look, so now after each head of those will have to be took off, and then the associated hole filled in. You can see the light letting through. So the, you've got hours and hours of work to get this up to new old stock panel spec. That's just what we've got to do, but it's a solid piece of metal that's worth doing. Okay, so as I said, automatic conversion to remove that clutch plate hole, blank it out. I'm done down this edge for this. That'll sit nicely on the top of our prepared lower bulkhead, which you saw in part seven. And really just going to keep on going on, on, on at this. I shall make a template for this now. I'm going to do these edges first. Once all the edges are done, in fact, there's only, well, there's only really three operations. One vertical edge to repair there, a curved edge, then one continuous curved edge. It'd be nice to get one piece of metal in that. So it's welder out again. A bit more grinding, polishing, cleaning, cutting. Then we'll shot blast it all. And just keep on working at it. Now, with it being facelift, the steering column bracket is different. However, for some crazy reason, and I don't know why, they kept the holes. These holes you see there, there's three holes in, right in the middle of your screen. They're for mark, they're for pre facelift steering column brackets, and then the bolts you see sticking out here, that's for the facelift. Why they kept these impressions here, they don't, they don't get used on a facelift. 
yet they're still in that bracket. Okay. One cardboard template, just profiled. I'm going to use that now to cut our metal sheet out so that we can repair that lip edge. It's all a bit raggedy, so we're going to slice half of it off and cut this into it. Here we go for that operation now. So we'll mark out onto the steel sheet, then very carefully cut round, get that done. Let's do that now. Okay guys, I've got that cut out ready to drop in, just mark the profile edge of it, make sure we cut the right amount off and we can just butt weld up to that, so we're just in there, so uh, one milli to slice off, sorry about the radio's on loud, let's get that cut, in we go. Okay, still in episode 8, um, we need to get that, uh, oh I don't know if I mentioned actually, that scuttle you've seen there, so we're pulling that bulkhead apart, we're getting that metal ready, so I've just took, give you a little break away from the workshop, out on the road in the Mondeo again, for episode 8 for eBay, a 30 quid win on a scuttle, an inner scuttle panel, that's the bit that I'm ever going to struggle to get, is that inner scuttle panel, well I saw on eBay, Someone's chopped a bulkhead out, and I've got a feeling it's the same car that I got the roof off. Um, on the, if you scroll through some of these Bramble films, you see uh, a roof that says "Do not scrap" on it. That roof came off this same car that I'm going to buy the scull, scuttle panel off. It's just it's come back round. So uh, we're going to go. I've won it on eBay, so I'm going to go and pick it up. And what we're going to do is hope that. When we pick the bulkhead section up, 
and we uh, drill the spot welds out on the scuttle, the inner scuttle panel will at least give us a panel, if not it will give us the shape that we need to make or repairable sections enough to actually fix it. Bramble's one is beyond, as you saw when we saw those corners with the, uh, the gaping holes in them, giving me no metal to uh, make a copy from. So I believe that inner panel is to divert rainwater away and make it go down the channels on the bulkhead plenum area and also I think it's to divert air as well into the intake of the cleaner box. I think just by the way you look at all these holes, we'll have a look at it when we open it up, but I think that's what it does, it's got a couple of purposes. But before any of this we need to go and pick it up, we're off to Yorkshire, West Yorkshire to collect our eBay win. Then we'll take it back into the workshop, so another panel coming in, so that's the, we've had the front end off the Portuguese car in there, we've had that donor bulkhead in there, we've now got nicely stripped, and now the final piece of the jigsaw is this scuttle area. And then we should have all the front end bits that we can start working even further back. Yorkshire then in the Mondeo. Part salvaging, part scavenging. Let's go. A quiet country farm for hundreds of years. And then Sir Alfred carves it up with the M62. A major feat of engineering there, of course, the M62. And that farmhouse there sitting right in the middle of uh, the summit, almost the summit. Urban myth that he wouldn't sell, uh, so they had to build the motorway around him. I'm not so sure that's correct. I think they had to plan that route anyway to do with the topography, I'm not sure. This bridge was an interesting one coming up. Look at this bad boy. Now, I'm not sure that there's a name for that type, <coughs> single span or something. I think that is the Pennine Way walking route. We cross now into the White Rose of Yorkshire over a dam which one it is making good progress on our trip to collect the skull 62 eastbound in the Mondeo trying to find you interesting sights and sounds along the way as you, you've sat back a little bit now the welders calm down the grinders idle and we go salvaging give you an update soon don't you worry about that sip on your tea dump your biscuits catch you in a sec right guys I'm back from the trip <clears throat> didn't film anything else after that motorway uh, thing sorry about that but sometimes you get a feeling people don't want to be cameras around their property and I understand so we've unloaded it's right behind the door. Is it going to be any good? It looks all right. Let's get it in. Oh yeah. Take a piece of that, please. Let's let's drag it in here, and then we'll get inspecting them skulls. Exciting. Let's get to work inspections then so you join us in part eight still salvaging still trying to save the car so straight away rust bubbles there on the skull and then damage to the skull here we may or may not use the top piece but it's the inner piece I'm interested in it'd be nice if this was completely salvageable and this, this could be salvaged Uh, a hole in it there, but it just depends. Oh shit! Oh, oh my god! Oh, oh, oh! 
Although, oh, I just want the inner piece then. Oh, okay. The club's making new scuttles, okay? The club is making new scuttles. I mean, that's the same as Bramble. That Bramble didn't have that rock there, so you could argue. This end's all right. Okay, so we've got a scuttle end down. But if I flip it, can I flip it? You're gonna allow me to flip it at home, YouTubers. Let me know if that's all right. Okay, thank you. We should be able to see it now then. Let's have a look at that. Let's have a look at that little fella. Well, this part, you see, no, that's what worries me. No, no. Okay, initially, they're all right. Here, we need this. So this is the inner piece. Now, what do we think it's for? Well, there's a drain hole. So obviously, with it being an air intake grill, you're going to get air, but you're also going to get water. And that forms a plenum. And here is our plenum. All this area here, so the, the heater box sits where my hand is now. And some closing panels up this end and the uh, wiper motor forms an air chamber of which we get ram air coming in and air drawn in under suction from the blower motor. But after the scuttle, they fit this separate panel which collects rain and also. Are we going to say that it diverts air into the appropriate part of the fan or not? We don't know. Now here's the fan there. That's, that's drawing air in from this point. Then blowing it down there. A little bit down here as well on bypass. But most of it through the fresh air vent. So the air's drawn through the grill as it would do and then it hits these plates could be a form of baffle it could be a form of noise reduction it could be a combination of baffle noise reduction and water channeling to get the water to land where we want it to it's quite a complex and interesting shape I'm going to quite enjoy this video mainly because of curiosity and because for me at Cortina City I've never really studied that inner panel very much because I think on Swampy the whole bulkhead went in, on uh, Ruby it was fine, so really this is the first time I've paid attention, I've paid attention to scuttles before, but this is the first time I've paid attention to an, an inner panel. They actually list it as, um, it's actually listed as, hold on while I just change your setting, I'm going to just change your setting, hold on. We'll Apologies for that. They actually list it as bulkhead top plate. So it's fitted to the bulkhead and so bulkhead supplied without the scuttle but with the dash top connected to the bulkhead. So it's all one piece by the, the top of the scuttle piece. So I'm interested in it just to try and work out what it actually, why someone would design the shapes that they do on it. You can see that there's, there's um, pressings in there and there's a large hole here. Now that's very close to the inlet, the induction side of the blower. So it would be trying to draw air out of that bit. Presumably it wouldn't try and draw from where my hand is. That's completely closed to the element. Again we're open here so it could draw air from there. And again we're open at that end so it could draw air from there. But I would imagine that that's straight out to... The atmosphere so ram air is going to get in straight into that also water can collect on this I wonder if it's a kind of water trap some water is going to get in but they must have they must have put some force into it it looks like the far end is reasonably closed up I'm putting my hand as a circle here cut out we're going to look at this when we turn. We're going to have to get all these spot welds off. So we want to salvage this. So I don't think we, there's any time to waste. And we can begin dissecting this piece. It looks good so far. Let's put it this way. It's a lot better than Brambles has gone right up to here. This has got... I mean, if I get the torch, I can have a proper look. But I think I'd rather just open it up. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty hopeful. 
that's going to be good so our task then immediately now is to take out our usual uh, suspects our spot welds so that we can release this inner piece you can actually see it here now that's that's how they rot because that rots through and then it starts to immediately the first line of attack is that inner panel it's right there waiting to get destroyed and that's what happened on bramble and many cortinas uh, no doubt if you were to have a little look around that area certainly if you've replaced this you'll probably find that you've had to f try and do a patch repair on that inner piece because that's when I've, I've seen people slicing these off and then getting new caps but and then probably having to do localized repairs on that piece where it really counts in the middle it never really rots so i guess if you if you're worried about your mark three if that had ever gone i don't think it's a mega critical situation that you've got if that had rotted out you could always get a camera and have a look inside in fact if you remove your heater and get a torch you're going to be able to inspect your situation be a great idea to spray a hell of a lot of wax oil dinner troll or whatever treatment built hammer built hammer whatever treatment stuff you like to use engine oil mixed with wax oil whatever you want that's a tip from graham and get it blasted into them far corners i've done this on all my cars uh pressurized lance feed it in with these panels off and blast the hell out of it so if the water does break through the scuttle at least it's uh, not going to take that panel out or at least it's going to slow it down and just try and make sure that you do get the wax oil under high pressure and blast the hell out of it and that's going to that's going to help your panel we're going to take this apart let's we've talked enough let's get on with it this is quite exciting really because I just want to see one of them panels. I mean, I've studied them in the books the last few weeks when we've been knowing that we're going to be needing it. And now I just want to get on and, and, and see it. I mean, we can look at the one that we're up against in case you're not caught up with the previous couple of films. This is what I took off. Skip back through the videos, guys, if uh, you've just joined us in episode 8 and you're not familiar. And you'll see what happens. But, I mean, even this one in the middle section... A lot of it intact, you know, but then it's completely gone at that end. And then look, there's nothing left at this end, and that's the problem. It also mounts the spindles for the wiper mechanism. And indeed, this oval, in fact, uh, is for when I'm thinking about it now the mechanism of the wipers. I'm sure that it is to do with clearances on the wipers. I'm sure. Could be wrong there. I'm just wondering if the knuckle of the wiper has to go into these recesses so they can make clearances. I don't know, but looking at the R, the way that they are, they're either for that or the, to get air in. And you've got this curious shape here. Anyway, enough of that piece. Let's get on and drill our new donor section, which we picked up from Yorkshire. We thank Graham for that because he did us a good deal and supplied some other real goodies as well. Mark free goodies, which I'll show you another time, but we loaded the car up with all sorts of, of panels and goodies. It's now time for me to get my spot well drill bit out and also a little tip that Graham showed me on drilling spot well. So I'm going to try that now. Let's move. Let's get going. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so panel is off. And no damage to the, the panel itself with the spot welds. We've hit them all right. All okay, could have ended up damaging this lip, but it hasn't, it's all okay. So here's our damage, and straight away I think I can work out what this hole's for. Indeed, I'm sure you at home can see that clearly this is a, a water drain because of that shape there. So, have we enough metal to uh, copy this or to get new metal in? Well, certainly enough to give us clues as to what we've got to make. That at least can be a template, but it hasn't gone through. But this would need replacing here. Uh, whether any of these complex shapes are too far gone, it could do with a dip, but after you dip it, who knows what would be left. I don't know. There is, there is metal there, so we need to look at the situation, but as you can hear, that beginning to crunch, so we need to be really careful because we are going to just use this as a mould. We're not going to fit this on. You can see it's the same as Bramble's car where the middle bit seems to survive or that's just where the paint's got through the grill. Indeed, it looks like the marks of the grill, although I would imagine it'd all be there. I don't know about that. There's paint on the middle section. Front mounting points are okay, much more metal than I've got on my one. So we need to carry on getting it out. Uh, there's more spot welds holding the front piece and then it's spot welded in around this lip so we need to get all this old metal out of the way. Then it's attached to the dashboard, uh, sorry the actual bulkhead flange plate when it comes up. Dashboard's actually attached separately. So we need to break it away from the bulkhead which is a continuation of these drills these spot weld drills are just pinched all the way through it so you just carry on taking them out because it needs holes drilled in it for plug welding purposes because we're not going to be able to spot weld this in I don't think okay so that is the panel now we've got an idea of what they look like the mystery is over as regards to grafting in the Portuguese one if that hadn't rotted because we have got a left hand drive panel which could be in even better condition than this is. It's not handed so that would not invert across so you couldn't actually do it. Again this looks like a drain. Like water would collect there and come out although that's actually enough to make a puddle. So that's a mystery. Water's just going to sit in that. That might be why they rotted, but it probably is. I guess that's a bit of a bad design, really, there on Ford's behalf. This, though, as, as more than a, a water trap, I'd say that's your air intake because if you think about it, look here where my hand is. I haven't got a heater to show you, but the heater box of the Cortina fits there. Your blower motor's just here in the bay with a heater box, and the air intake's right behind that which is right in line with that. So I think it's drawing the majority of its air through this. These, I think, are for the wiper motor links. I don't think that's to let air in, or it could be to, to keep an even distribution. That could overload, so it spread the loading of air. But maybe it just draws from those two points. I'm sure that's to get clearance on the wiper linkages. Uh, so... That's definitely for wiper motors there. And maybe it isn't. The rods just go like this, so it's just a big hole. And um, it has got little drain channels in that one too. Look, and there's another out drain outlet there for the water. So it's designed to just catch water, maybe to baffle the noise as well. If you imagine the ram air effect, let's put the grill on. Stand back a, a little bit so I'm not too close up for this uh, clip. Imagine the ram air effect. It could be that if you didn't have this, um, put into one side the fact that it holds the spindles, spindles aside for the wipers. If you didn't have that, uh, it could be that you get a howling blast 
of noise and, and turbulence inside this bit and then that would make its way in as noise and turbulence into your blower. So it could be also serving as a baffle to, to break the airflow up. It's interesting, I mean someone somewhere has sat and designed that out with specific reasons in mind and I'd love to know what they are. Especially something like that, that circle, you can see what's left of it. You know, why would you put the circle there? Um, I don't know. There's a big, big time trap for leaves and debris there. And you can see that's exactly why it would rot. And leaves would just get stuck into that. And, then, and that's just going to eat right through. And that's why these bulkheads go always in that point first. And you can see the attack on the paint around that area where... The air coming through would be drawing across and see any dampness and you can see almost that that's been et at by the draw of the blower or the ram air pushing through as that being the easiest route for the ram air to get through but there'll be a reason why that's patched like that the paint let's tip it back hang on tip it back and it could be that that pattern you see is an airflow pattern that's that et away at the paint due to the fact that that's how the air comes through that baffle hole. It would make sense because it hasn't done it in these places. Um, it's done it a little bit there, but again, <clears throat> that's in line with the air grills and the actual direction of the flow because there's a slight curve on the car, so it could be that your air's pushing in that way and the air pushes in that way as the car cuts through and the, the shape of the bonnet comes in in the air perhaps let's do it with the camera you're coming in you're the air over and through the grill and in it's possible these are only theories someone if there's anyone out there in youtube land who can offer got any experience with this kind of physics of air look at that again ram air then coming across up the bonnet through this trying to find its way through Obviously, the first lines are straight through the, the um, square hole and that oval. They're, they're directly in line with the grill vents, but the draw for it, it if, if the heater was here, it definitely would draw raindrops in. So perhaps that when the rain comes through, by the time it gets over to this side, it's landed on the panel, and then that stops this is like a hood if you will here so the rain can't find its way into the airflow of the heater box it might be that they don't want any water in this area at all that could even be the reason why that's lipped up but where would it go after that I don't know because there doesn't seem to be a, a drainage point at that low position stuff like this really interests me it's technical stuff it's, it's good to know how your car works if you're really into your Cortinas and you want to know every everything about them so that when you're driving it you know exactly how things are working and that's why I'm into this kind of stuff I just find it really interesting and it's been good fun just to take this to pieces I think you know, we did the best we could there we saved that yeah, I mean I've saved this it's not dented or damaged any of it but it is could be repaired because we fit two new scuttle lens to that and then a, a piece that could be grafted in there off, off uh, this donor section that I've got so I can make that into a, a new scuttle so that's a good little piece to keep and save we'll make that into a nice new piece easy to get that fixed just uh, cut and shut there so good that we've saved that right I'm going to go and uh, continue on cleaning up it's got it's reached uh, 8 o'clock in the evening so I'm going to call it a day and tomorrow will see me continuing and, and pulling this section out to then begin to refurbish it and rebuild it. It's going to need quite a few bits of metal introducing into this end and shaping. We've got to try and extract it out without distorting it so that when we do fix it up it slots nicely back in to the bulkhead. Okay over and out for now. See you tomorrow. Well, you can see why it rusts. Debris will just gather here and tend to just gravitate towards this corner and such that it rots through and eventually gets through your bulkhead. We've got to make this shape. 
there's only one way I can think of doing it and that's to break it down into small pieces here then braise them all up together and we're going to use some hot uh, flame oxy, oxy flame to hammer metal into shape so we can get little imprints like that and shapes around here so I'm going to have a go at making it because we can't get that panel it's hidden under the skull so you could get away with it not being an exact match but I want to try and get it the best I can this side's going to be even harder because there's less material to work with but we've studied photographs and we've been down to Express to see their one they can make it but there's a long lead time and a minimum order on this so for that reason I'm going to attempt to form the metal using this as the line here I'm going to make three sections of metal maybe two that comes round and emulates that shape and then we're going to join it to the end and then we're going to lift the whole panel out so that we've now got a complete panel that's the task for today let's see what we can do Okay, we've cleaned that up, and luckily there's just enough structure here on this Mark III bulkhead that stand back so you can see what we're up against. So bought that off eBay, brought it in, hoping we could use this panel. <coughs> Excuse me. Bramble's panel's gone up to about here. This gone by a quarter each end, but enough evidence and clues for us to see the kind of metal we need to make. Now we have got photographs of this off an original one from Express but they can't sell that to us they need it for their master mold and it's a minimum run of 10 because no one seems to be asking for these panels at the moment in Mark III Cortina land so unless I can get 10 people in line to get them ordered which I don't think I'm going to do in a time scale maybe do it in the future if you've got a Mark III Cortina and you you're replacing your scuttle which is quite a common job I'll show you a scuttle end let's go over here bear with me while I, I'll just help you out on something a scuttle end it's for the other side but they rot that's brambles and if that scuttle just bear with me and assume this is the the right hand side or the uh, the near sides underneath your skull no doubt you're going to find similar stories to this if it's bad enough to rot through the scuttle it means that it not only, unfortunately metal rusts both ways so if it's rotted the top of your scuttle the odds are that it's also attacked from the um, downside of it so and probably it attacks this first before it reaches the scuttle so even if you've got good scuttles okay then you're still going to have possibility that this inner panel has been eaten away now you might not get any idea of that until you lift the scuttle if you took your heater box off here's, here's your heater box in the bulkhead you can look up with a torch into through this aperture here and that's the air intake aperture by the way because the uh, the induction for the, the hamster wheel or the uh, the cage fan is there so that cage fans my fingers rotating round I'm not sure if it's clockwise rotation or anti that'll do me head in that uh, which way do they spin I think it's anti anyway in a squirrel fan the inductions in the center of it centrifugal fan so you can see that in line with that you've got the air intake here it obviously wouldn't use this area for the air intake because the rainwater and the high wind speeds coming in and striking that collecting the rainwater and draining it off that way also comes down and drains off this way but it that looks like it's slightly raised so I'd imagine it tries to get it most of it that way it would eventually collect in here which is a bad design because look that is a bucket already look so that's just going to hold water that might be its intention of course but I doubt it uh, to stop water actually entering the intake but I don't I wonder for so 
Another hole here, I don't know what that's for. I've obviously put a circular hole in that for a reason. So, my point being that um, this panel here is in the firing line and it's, it's, it'll have rotted through before. When you look through that, as I said, you'll be able to get an idea if you use a boroscope or your mobile phone might get a picture from it there, but I doubt that. Then you're going to see what's happened. Now, to recreate it, we're going to try and recreate this. You can break it down into sections if you don't want to make it because it's quite a complex pressing. I would suggest three sections of metal here one strip, the second, and a third strip. Now you can see the, the extent to which this panel goes. We've been digging for clues, we've, we've had the flap wheel out and we've cleaned it back. So we've cleaned off the remnants of the original scuttle, which was sat round there like that. That's off. And you can see that this, this metal continues across and then it actually lands on the A-pillar base. Which is why if you're ever cleaning up your A-pillars when you're doing your scuttles, you see all flaky metal on it. And you think that your A-pillar's rotted. It hasn't. It's the remnants of that bulkhead top panel. So that continues along. It even follows that little shape round there. So we've got to make that. It wraps around that. Forms part of the top flange for the windscreen seal. That seems to be just a flat face, and then there's a circle. Then we're coming down and then round this top and continue along there to form a closure inside your car to the right of your heater. You would have this. So if that's good on your car, that's a quick check you could make. You're probably looking all right. It's spot welded, and I can see the spots there to the bulkhead lower just to form strength. So if you're trying to restore and you've lost the shape, then this video may be of help because I'm going to make a nice slow still shot for you to look at it now so you don't have to press pause. That is what we're up against. We've got to make this. So the idea for me, I'm not a metal former. We're just hobbyists out here in YouTube land, but we're going to try and shape it round. If I get a strip of metal, put it across there, I can heat it. And there's enough strength in there to bash and form that won't be a big deal we can bash that around i bet you we get that quite easy so if we make it easy for ourselves and break it into parts and we weld them together later let's go for a strip that way up to here we'll recreate the circle that's not too hard we'll even recreate this little dimple here and we'll go as far as say that raised mound and that raised mound there's for the skull to line up on when you when you drop it in place and we'll go up to that edge because that's that's solid still. There's no point trying to recreate this. It's already it's already good. That's not even not even crusting through yet. So we'll go for that. That's just a nice run. That piece I don't think will be too bad. A little bit more complex down here, but even then, that's only some basic folds. There's no actual pressing shapes. A little bit. It's going to sit on there. You can just see where it used to sit. Look. Why it ends there, I'm not sure. <clears throat> I'm going to have to go and refer to my photographs. Andy took some detailed pics. I need to go and look at them now and just see. But that's what we're up against. I'm going to, I'm going to lay a piece of metal in there now. And let's see what we can do with that. So, bulkhead top panel or inner scuttle panel repair. Let's go. Looks like a Cyberman. <laughs> Wear a mask for a mask for little Jim, little Newt. It looks like a Cyberman. Let me just get a bit more oxygen. Oh, please. Oh. Mmm. Pure. Oh. Pure oxygen. <laughs> 